Hello and welcome along to Snetterton for round 14 of the Miltech Sport Civic Cup. It is the final weekend of racing here at Snetterton with three races to look forward to. Uh, one coming up for you very shortly and of course two later on this afternoon. And we've had a very busy day already because we had a race carried over from uh, Donington Park which took place first thing this morning and it was an eventful race of course which uh, leaves us with a championship in the balance which is uh, good to see and we can take you through of course what happened this morning very quickly before we get on with round 14 because Morgan Bailey uh, was the race win up he came through to take the victory by just a couple of seconds over Robert Butler in car number 74 and George Out Williams the man who starts this race from pole position made it onto the podium as well they were your top three in the club category and in terms of the productions it was Nick Charlier who picked up a first win of the year in car number 97 ahead of Mervyn Beckett and Harry Threlfall so all action uh, for this morning but we are now looking forward to round 14 of the championship which is not too far away as the cars now make the way onto the grid ready to go for what's going to be 15 minutes of racing they're going to head off onto that green flag lap very shortly and as we said it's going to be George out Williams who is going to lead them away on the green flag lap in terms of the championship coming here to Snetterton well things have changed just slightly after uh, round number 11 this morning but from here on in you cannot drop any scores because uh, 15 of the 16 rounds count but no drop scores are allowed at the final three races of the year so effectively it's all now going for glory in these three races and in the production class it is going to be uh, very close indeed between the likes of Alfie Threlfall who comes here now after drop scores on 210 points uh, Mervyn Beckett sits there in second on 197 and Harry Threlfall the man third in the championship on 107 Four points. So the grid for this one though lines up as follows. It's going to have George Out Williams to start from pole position. Alongside him, number uh, 72, Matt Love, who is in contention for the championship. Row two then has number 74, Robert Butler. Alongside him, Jamie Tongs, another championship contender. Morgan Bailey and Alistair Camp there on row number three. And it's Alistair Camp who leads the championship into this round 14. Ryan Bensley next up on row number four. Alongside him in eighth place is uh, Bradley Lane. Then back on row number five, it's Philip Wright and Max Edmondson. And back to row number six, we see Paul McHugh and Simon Waite to round out the 12th. 12 that we have on row six then back onto row number seven it's going to be ben sharp uh, alongside him jordan brenham and then the eighth row sees dave Buki and the uh, pole sitter within the production class that of david marshall row nine then sees mervyn beckett and travis coin and then further back from them inside the top 20 on row number 10 it's going to be alfie threlfall with harry threlfall on all threlfall row number 10 and then nick charlia and matthew stenning on row number 11 with simon welch and reese lewis in 23rd and 24th places and we should be having Edward Sibold in car 177 to round out the 25 starters uh, for this round 14 of the championship we've had in excess of 35 that's been the average uh, grid size so far this year 35 plus which is absolutely fantastic for the Miltech Sports Civic Cup in 2021 a few down for this final weekend but as we said a few in the championship uh, some of those are not involved in the championship so I've decided to rest the car for this final weekend uh, so we mentioned the uh, production class Let's very quickly update you on the Cup Championship added into this round 14. And it's Alistair Camp who leads the championship on 217 points. And that, of course, is after drop scores as well. He has uh, Matt Luff second in the championship for Area Motorsport. He's on 185 points. And third in the championship is Jamie Tonks. And uh, Jamie Tonks finds himself on 162 points to drop scores. So a little bit uh, stretched down between the top three in Cup. But anything can happen. Uh, with racing and we're looking forward to as we said 15 minutes of action in this one uh, Alistair Camp so far this year has been on top form as ever uh, he's had five wins eight podiums in total uh, that's the most of anyone in terms of the championship this year and it's almost more than all of those combined who have also taken wins as well this year because we've had uh, what's going to be now five other uh, different winners and the most wins coming from uh, the second best of Robert Butler and that of Ben Sharp both of those have taken uh, two wins as well this year but everyone else has been uh, solo race victors
So the cars heading now back into their grid positions here at Snetterton, the 200 circuit in use, which is the two mile circuit. It's uh, the kind of the normal which we used to have before 2011 because of course the reconfiguration of the infield uh, made it three miles in length, but this is what it used to be before uh, the redevelopment in 2011. So it's back to what we used to know uh, in the heyday of Snetterton but we are almost good to go the final few cars coming into place towards the back of the grid and as soon as the 25th and last car is in position we will receive the green flag from the back and then all eyes will be on to the gantry ready for 15 minutes of action with George out Williams there on the front row and alongside him is going to be the number 72 machine uh, looking good to go Matt Luff and he needs to finish of course ahead of Alistair Camp to try and keep the championship alive as the red lights go out and it's a fairly even start from the front row but Matt Luff gets a bit of a second bite of the cherry as they work their way out towards Richie's for the first time it's going to be quite congested in towards that first corner almost three four wide into the corner there and diving up the inside oh, a bit of contact unfortunately for number 74 because Robert Butler loses it he catches it and he carries on his way but that was very dramatic into Richie's corner with four running together as they made their way through all safely which is good to see and a little bit of a drama there for number 72 because Matt Luff now makes a mistake and goes across the grass one of the championship contenders is going to drop down the field and that's going to open the door for the uh, car of Morgan Bailey to come through so number 28 now into the first time but not what Matt Luff needed in terms of the championship Ali Camp by the look of things has now straight away jumped up into second position on the opening lap of this race and there's that Ryan Bensley I think that's made his way up into third position no not quite that's George Out Williams who's dropped down from pole position so it's a bit of a, a reshuffle towards the front of the order but as they head through the bomb hole for the first time it's Morgan Bailey that leads Ali Cam gets out as well so he just manages to uh, catch it as they work their way now in towards Corum but he's going to be under pressure surely uh, from George Out Williams as they work their way down towards Murray's for the completion of lap number one but just shows how cold it is here not quite as cold as we normally have in October it's kind of 13 14 degrees air temperature but track temperature won't be too much different from that so they're really struggling to get these tyres up to temperature as it stands so uh, a few have been caught out on the first lap which is now completed but uh, Alistair Camp just managing to hold on to things there in car number 45 to remain in second position but now the, the the fight for the final step on the podium is well and truly on between Ryan Bensley who's trying to catch and pass George out Williams which he does down the inside in towards the Wilson hairpin and Ryan Bensley goes through into third position lovely move there on the inside for the number seven machine and George out Williams now drops himself down into fourth position not too far adrift from them is the number 40 machine of Bradley Lane is uh, a few tenths of a second back at the line in fact it was 1.8 seconds at the line between fourth and fifth but uh, that should start to close down now after the little battle we had there between Ryan Bensley and George Out Williams which has changed the positions but uh, up front Morgan Bailey still continues to lead 1.5 seconds at the end of the first lap but you can see already that Alistair Camp is starting to close things down as they work the way now on towards the end of the lap we've got a great scrap going on here between uh, David Buki in the mix there number 51 you've got number 40 as well which is trying to find his way through that's Bradley Lane with a bit of damage to the rear bumper as well so uh, hazard a guess there's probably been some contact between a few of those over the course of that lap but uh, Bradley Lane trying to make places up uh, but in fact he's lost a couple there to uh, what's going to be the number 24 machine which has dropped back uh, so that's Ben Sharp and also uh, that of David Buki gets through as well so a bit of a uh, a reshuffle there in towards Richie's they go once more and David Buki now late on the brakes trying to get down the inside of the number 24 machine which does Quite work. He's now going to be under attack here from uh, what's going to be Bradley Lane in the red and black Civic who goes to the outside line in towards the Wilson hairpin. Can he get the job done? They're going to be side by side still. Bit of contact there from behind as David Buki loses the rear end and through past him goes the number 33 machine of Max Edmondson. So this is a fantastic battle uh, just outside the top five as it stands. But of course it's all for points and prizes possibly at the end of the season because one of those involved in that battle David Buki is trying to get the championship in the cup class albeit he's quite a few points behind Alistair Camp, Matt Luff and Jamie Tongs but uh, if Alistair Camp fails to finish then David Buki would need to be as high as possible within this one as it stands but we've just 11 minutes to go the race now starting to 
wear on with Morgan Bailey still leading and he's being caught now by the second place man of Alistair Camp because last time through Camp there in second place was the quickest of anyone at 123.097 which is the quickest lap of the race so far Ryan Bensley comes through still in third position as it stands and he now takes over with the no he doesn't Alistair Camp is still the quickest lap but he goes a little bit faster on that previous lap with a 122.771 so we're a few tenths away from what they did in the earlier race we had a 122.3 and of course the fastest lap is quite vital because that gets you an extra point uh, within the race as well so three extra points across the three races 25 points of course for uh, a race win as well so as it stands it's going to be Morgan Bailey uh, looking for the win in this one and that would get him 25 points and of course earlier on he was the uh, race victor so everything so far for Morgan today is going very well indeed but Alistair Camp as we said possibly has other ideas about what he's uh, going to try and do with the uh, race leader and with it of course he's going to try and get himself at 25 points to go with it as well so keep an eye on Alistair Camp we'll keep an eye on the gap and if it's coming down or going up it looks pretty similar to what it was a lap ago at the minute so the top two not too much has changed there getting a little bit closer for third and fourth more because just look in the background you can see Ryan Bensley uh, now with George Alp Williams back with him so that gap is closing uh, George Alp Williams going to try and get on the podium in this uh, second race of the day round 14 this is of course he got third place earlier on this morning and then further back look at this five-way train which continues as well with uh, what's going to be Bradley Lane that still leads with the bumper trailing from behind just now pulled a, a slight over the next car of number 24 which is Ben Sharp uh, Ben Sharp still has for company the number 33 machine of Max Edmondson so it's almost two by two with uh, Lane just pulling up the road now by second uh, and then Sharp and Edmondson together and then Buki has what's going to be number 74 which is Robert Butler for company in ninth position uh, Robert Butler has dropped a few places in this race he's gone from third down to ninth position so hasn't quite got the car how he wants it in this uh, second race of the day but Morgan Bailey working his way through extended gap at the end of the previous lap 1.7 seconds so it's kind of ebbing and flowing as it stands but uh, Alistair Camp will probably know that Morgan Bailey is not one of his uh, main championship contenders so won't really possibly try and catch him up he'll just be more worried about what may be coming from behind as we look from behind Ryan Bensley and uh, George Al Williams again very close together in towards the final corner at Murray so they accelerate up towards the line there's eight minutes to go so just approaching half race distance as it stands and will Ryan Bensley be under attack here from the number five machine when it gets closer and closer across the line they're separated by just a couple of tenths of a second but does the number five machine of George send one to the inside no not really there because Ryan Bensley had the uh, line and place covered so he stays in third but still has to be quite defensive up towards the hairpin because again down the inside now tries to go George out Williams and that surely will be job done because yep George goes through nice little flick through the right hander then back to the left hander at Chapman uh, but now he finds himself possibly under attack from Ryan Bensley because uh, he'll now get into the slipstream uh, down the Bentley straight and he could be under attack by the time they hit the brakes in towards the Brundle and Nelson sequence of the old S's but uh, on this occasion it's George who defends very nicely indeed so Ryan Bensley has no way of getting through you can just see as well the top four have really uh, pulled this gap out uh, amongst the rest of the field so they are going at great guns at the minute they've got what's going to be over eight seconds in hand over the, the next gaggle of cars which uh, I can tell you still led by at the minute number 40 Bradley Lane uh, they can just see coming through in the background at Corum uh, through the shot and heading down towards the final corner but uh, Bradley Lane is the man who is just being caught we can see so Bradley Lane and what's going to be Ben Sharp are, are closing in on each other as Ali Camp goes through then to do another quickest lap of the race 122.436 still not quite as quick as he went this morning on that 122.3 uh, nonetheless that will still be a, a quickest uh, lap of the race if he can hold that to the end he'll get that extra point as well which will be quite vital in terms of the championship points he'll carry into round 15 a little bit later on today 
the nearest rival to him, of course, Matt Luff and Jamie Tongs. Well, Matt Luff is down in 10th position, and Jamie Tongs is still out there, but by the looks of things, maybe a lap down, because I think he's been a visit to the pit lane, so Jamie Tongs, not what he needed. And as we said, round 14, 15, and 16, the final three races of the year, uh, are going to, of course, not be with drop scores, so you can't discount the bad result in this one. As we focus on Morgan Bailey, you just saw a little bit wide through the exit of Nelson, so he's really pushing now to try and keep Alistair Camp at bay because Alistair on this lap alone has brought that gap down to almost nothing. Last time through, they were separated by just over a second. Uh, that, to the eye, is not a second, is it? So Alistair Camp is on a charge now, just had a few laps of backing off and just trying to keep the tyres as cool as possible but now he's getting the heat back into them and trying to close on Morgan Bailey once more as they cross the line the gap is going to be half a second so uh, another quickest lap of the race from Ali Camp and that now does surpass what he did this morning so 122.365 uh, is quicker than what we had earlier on and that will still stand with uh, another point to add to his 22 points he'd get for second place but I don't think he's going to sit there and wait is he because he now sets his sights on Morgan Bailey again down the back straight so on towards the Bentley straight they head nothing to choose between the top two just starting to leave in the distance now George Alp Williams in third and also Ryan Bensley in fourth place so those two now a couple of seconds adrift Nick Charlier has set the quick slap by the way in the production class 125.5 926 that is fractionally slower than what they did this morning as well but uh, Charlia is on the charge took a win earlier this morning in production he's second as it stands to the 166 machine of Dave Marshall and just a word on Dave a rookie here this weekend in the production class and uh, he took his first pole position as well in his first outing so not bad is it for a rookie uh, David Marshall down in the production class but our, our eyes focused firmly on what's happening out front with just under four minutes to go so they will squeeze three more laps in by the looks of it and it's still Morgan Bailey that does lead the way looking for a second victory of the day here at Snetterton that would be only his second victory of the year as well hasn't done the uh, full campaign as Morgan Bailey but the ones he has done he's been right up there in the point so uh, quick pedal up looking forward to seeing Morgan back for a full year in 2022 very late on the breaks there was Alistair Camp in second place and luckily he wasn't really being hounded by anyone else because that could have dropped him down to third if not off the podium places but Alistair Camp maybe just caught out there slightly by the breaking uh, point of Morgan Bailey so Alistair Camp is going to try and close that gap back down but that's just kind of put him on the back foot once again with time starting to run out now three minutes to go as Morgan Bailey heads under the bridge down towards Brundle and Nelson for what's going to be the ninth time of asking and behind the top two Ryan Bensley now looking a lot more comfortable in third position so no real change there between third and fourth in fact it's George Al Williams isn't it my apology who still sits there in third and it's Ryan Bensley who's now dropped off the tail of the top three Next up, we focus on what's happening here. This is for 10th, 11th and 12th place. Max Edmondson with what's going to be the number 47 for company. That's Simon Waite. And then behind them, Jordan Brennan. Good to see Jordan out. He missed qualifying this morning, but he's managed to start this race from the back of the grid. And he's already made himself uh, seen and heard up into 12th position. So that will give him a, a couple of points. But uh, can he make any more progress in this race? He's got, as we said, Waite and Edmondson uh, just up the road of him standing towards Corum. Those cars do now head. And Jamie Tonks is the man just ahead of these two. So Jamie is a lap down, 23rd place he currently sits. And up towards the line comes this fight for 11th and 12th. Or oh, slide in the background there. That was from, I think, the leader of the... Uh, production class Dave Marshall who just got it sideways and that might now put him under pressure from uh, Nick Charlie uh, let's see if Nick does get ahead across the line as they work the way towards Richie's corner and yeah Nick Charlie just go through in towards the lead of the uh, production class so Charlie uh, ahead of Marshall this just behind these two actually that we're uh, looking at the timing screen and seeing what's happening but uh, this is a close battle as well so wherever you look in the Miltech Sports Civic Cup there is a battle feast your eyes on and it's Waite and Brennan who are fighting over what's going to be 11th and 12th places as they head their way down in towards the Brundle Nelson complex for the 
penultimate time, I reckon, because the leader's very shortly to complete another lap. And with a lap time left, just under, uh, then we will be going on to the last lap of the race. So heading that way down in towards the end of the lap. Uh, this is what we can see, the production class. So this is really tight indeed. As we said, Nick Charlie are getting through the two black cars just up ahead. And in fact, Dave Marshall's got back ahead. So the two black cars you can see heading down towards the bomb hole now has Dave Marshall back ahead of Nick Charlie. So that's changed for the second time on this lap. So this is for your production class lead. Behind, you can see Mervyn Beckett in the all yellow Civic. He is fighting for the championship and he has for company uh, the machine of what's going to be Travis Coyne. Uh, so they are all tangled together and who's on the back of Travis Coyne as he makes a slight uh, lock up in towards Murray's now that's going to be possibly one of the uh, cup class runners and that's number nine by the looks of things so that's Paul McHugh who's dropped his way down the order but now through go the production class uh, leaders onto their last lap as well with uh, five seconds left on the clock Dave Marshall has to defend it towards Richie's runs a little bit wide but doesn't quite leave the door open for the number 97 machine of Nick Charlie to get through Nick was a race winner earlier this morning he makes a big lunge down the inside in towards the Wilson hairpin and that will be job done but he run wide he does indeed he's far too late on the brakes so that's now possibly lost him the potential for second within the class as well meantime up towards the line second win of the day is going to be for Morgan Bailey who takes the checker flag in the cup class of the Miltech Sport Civic Cup second place goes the way of Alistair Camp in the end he misses out by 1.5 seconds at the line third place then to George Alp Williams he comes through for what's going to be his third podium of the year that's going to be a second podium of the day for George as well uh, fourth place for Ryan Bensley in car number seven just ahead of fifth place Bradley Lane and then behind them we've got Ben Sharp in sixth already taking the checker flag uh, David Buki through in seventh and then we've got Robert Butler ahead uh, of Matt Luff and Max Edmonton to round out your top ten uh, we'll try and pick up on the production uh, class battle as well which was quite intense towards the end of that uh, penultimate lap and of course they've gone through onto their last lap so let's see if we can have them across the line 166 and 97 it was Dave Marshall and Nick Charlier here they come and it's going to be Dave Marshall that wins Nick Charlier for second just ahead of Mervyn Beckett and Travis Coyne comes through fourth in class just behind uh, Paul McHugh who was one of the uh, cup class runners in amongst the production class runners but uh, what an exhilarating race that was. Uh, lots happening down the field. There was a great battle towards the uh, front of the order as well. But uh, Morgan Bailey, for the second time today, takes the spoils as a race winner. So 25 points will go to him. Uh, Alistair Camp picks up 22 points. Uh, and does he hold on to the fastest lap of the race as well? I don't think he does because Matt Luff, right towards the end, uh, did squeeze through with a quicker time of a 122.269. But the results then for round 14 sees Morgan as your winner second place for Alistair Camp third place making the podium is George Alp Williams for the second time today Ryan Bensley comes home in fourth place ahead of what's going to be uh, Bradley Lane behind that you've got Ben Sharp in fifth place David Buki for seventh ahead then of what's going to be Robert Butler and then behind them you've got Matt Luff and Max Edmondson in the production class it was Dave Marshall who took the victory ahead of Nick Charlier uh, Mervyn Beckett for third Travis Coyne Harry Threlfall uh, then we see Further back, we've got uh, Matt Stenning uh, with Ed Sibold, uh, Simon Welch, and then further back, it's uh, Lewis and Alfie Threlfall, who rounds out the top ten. So there you go, your two classes. You've got uh, a podium to look forward to uh, for the drivers. We won't cover that, unfortunately, for you for this race, but we'll get the uh, podium finishers and, of course, hopefully chat with the driver for rounds 15 and 16. But that is the uh, first race of the Miltec Sport Civic Cup for today that we've live streamed for you. And that will put the championship in a slightly different position as well because Alistair Camp finishing ahead of Matt Luff and Jamie Tonks and David Buki uh, will surely extend his championship lead in the cup class. And in terms of the production, I think Alfie Threlfall may now have lost the lead to Mervyn Beckett after that result for him, which saw him through in third position. But we'll get an update on all the points for you a little bit later on. But uh, going quite swimmingly for Morgan Bailey today. As we said, two wins out of two for the MJB Motorsport team. Ali Camp coming home in second and George Alt Williams making the podium in third place as well. So that's round 14 done here at Snetterton in what are very sunny conditions. We've got rounds 15 and 16 to look forward to a little bit later on. Uh, round 15 coming up for you just after half past three and the final round of the year at just after five o'clock. But for now, that's all the action for round 14 of the Miltech Sport Civic Cup.